Our next speaker is Gary Von Breda. Uh, he is the Director of Global Food Safety at McDonald's Corporation. In this role, he works closely with regulators, academia, and the food industry to ensure that McDonald's food safety programs are reputable, valid, and science-based. He's an advisory board member of the University of Georgia's Center for Food Safety and previously served as a board member uh, for the University of Nebraska's Food Allergy Research and Resource Center. Gary has a bachelor's in biochemistry and microbiology and a master's in food science with a focus on foodborne pathogenic microbiology from Kansas State University. And now with his presentation, the approved supplier program, case study and supplier recall, please welcome Gary Von Breda. Thank you, Jonathan. Give me one second here. Just a quick uh, audiovisual check, if you don't mind, Jonathan. You're great. Thanks so much. Excellent. So thank you, Jonathan. And uh, hello, everyone. As mentioned, um, my name is Gary Van Breda. I'm the Director of Global Food Safety for McDonald's Corporation. And in this role, I'm responsible for ensuring that our food safety standards and expectations are current and science-based. Um, our requirements are typically more prescriptive. Um, and are considered to be equivalent to GFSI plus the McDonald's addendum. So in addition, I'm also responsible for the selection and approval and performance evaluations of the audit firms that evaluate our supplier quality and food safety management standards, um, GFSI plus addendum. Um, I operate out of our McDonald's global headquarters in Chicago, and you may be able to see from my background picture that that is actually our um, headquarters in the West Loop of Chicago. So today I'm, I'll be talking about our approved supplier program, focusing on uh, supplier recall expectations and verifications. I'll begin by giving you an overview of, of what we do to manage food safety expectation at the suppliers. Uh, we will delve into a bit of how we manage this in totality and then spend the majority of our time today going through a case study of using mock external recall or withdrawal exercises to ensure that our supply chain is, is ready. So let's look at our key food safety standards from farm to the counter of the restaurant, uh, sometimes called uh, farm to fork. Let me now introduce you to the standards and the expectations. Uh, documents that we have to ensure compliance across our food supply chain. Uh, at the farm, we expect all growers to comply with the McDonald's good agricultural practices. Uh, this document sets the expectation we have for the farm to produce an agricultural product that is safe to consume. Um, at our protein facilities, we have requirements that cover slaughter and deboning operations, um, that includes aspects such as GMP, traceability, animal health and welfare, as well as HACCP assessments. When it comes to the food factory or the processor, where we do further processing of food, uh, we require what is called our SQMS audit or Supplier Quality and Food Safety Management System audit, which is equivalent, as I said earlier, to the Global Food Safety Initiative or GFSI plus a McDonald's addendum um, subset of the audit. Of course, we do have uh, different food categories. Uh, category one being our higher risk foods that we produce at these facilities. I'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Uh, but what I need you to know is that at these locations, we also have an additional unannounced GMP audit that we conduct. If we look further down our supply chain at the distribution center, uh, we use external distributors, which we manage through organizations such as Harvey or Martin Brower, we do require unannounced distribution quality management process or DQMP audits at these locations around the world. And then lastly, at the restaurants, we do also conduct food safety audits, which we do a bunch of comparative analysis against different 
uh, uh, QSR, uh, quick service restaurants, as well as uh, regula regulatory uh, notifications around the world. So if we look at our supplier food safety and quality um, management system, you can see that there are seven parts um, on this screen. I will leave this up here for just a few seconds so you can see you know, at a high level the association between the GFSI schemes and our standards. What I will point out, and for the purpose of this presentation, uh, I will focus on section four that addresses our expectation of crisis management planning at every supplier um, location that we do business with around the world. So overall, we require every supplier location to have a written crisis management plan, which includes a recall plan. Our expectation is that the plan must include, firstly, a list of all the current applicable regulations. And these are regulations, not just in the country that the food factory operates in, but if the food factory exports to different countries around the world, we expect this list also to be inclusive of those regulations of the country to which the food factory is shipping to. Secondly, we expect to see a list of emergency contact information that is current and represents individuals within the organization with contact information that is accurate. Uh, thirdly, we expect to see customer communication strategies uh, that includes how and when um, the food factory or the location will communicate with us as well as the public, as well as media, and finally also to regulators. And then lastly, we require an annual effectiveness test of this plan. If we look further along our crisis management expectations, we also expect to see uh, these elements in the supplier locations crisis management plan. So for example, we would expect how the risk is um, assessed and categorized within that supplier location. A description of that communication plan that I spoke about earlier, uh, that includes internal communication within that organization, uh, as well as external communication, including McDonald's. The emergency contact information is imperative for us and we expect to see that. Uh, we expect also to see an, a, a person who has been identified who will lead uh, incident management, as well as a person who will act as a spokesperson in terms of crises. Implementation requirements are also required, individual as well as departmental requirements um, involving who and which departments, which individuals will be involved in crisis management. We expect also to see a step-by-step -step checklist of required activities. One thing that, that um, may be a little different uh, to what you've seen typically within crisis management uh, procedures is where we do expect to see a specific and recognizable root cause analysis um, at every event after the crisis and you know how that is tied to subsequent development of corrective actions. And then lastly, I'll point out that there needs to also be a description of the internal simulation exercises based on different probable scenarios that um, are conducted annually to assess both the adequacy as well as the effectiveness at the plan at that specific supplier location. So we tend to be a little bit more prescriptive than most. Um, it, it tends to be very comprehensive. Um, certainly, I think what the pandemic taught us is the importance of supply chain contingency planning. And so for us, contingency planning must also include uh, the aspects um, detail in the McDonald's global supply chain and contingency policy. This is a written policy that is external to our SQMS requirements, um, but that is enforced as a subcomponent of our SQMS audits. So at a minimum, we expect to see this alignment with the McDonald's global supply chain uh, contingency policy. We also expect to see that the country supply chain and quality system leads are engaged 
And then the disengagement from a contingency perspective happens on a regular basis. So prior to implementing any alternative or uh, contingency product sourcing, whether these are raw materials or packaging, or even the finished product, uh, McDonald's must be involved in the review, as well as the approval of all of these sources. Uh, contingency plans must be tested appropriately with the minimum test frequency based on risk, uh, as described in the policy that I just mentioned, the McDonald's Global Supply Chain Contingency Policy. I'll, I'll speak a little bit about this later, um, focusing more on the outputs of that policy. However, what you need to know for um, our presentation today is that there's really three potential uh, or possible outcomes to the contingency risk assessment. Firstly, uh, paper exercise, um, where if the materials, the location in the world, uh, the geopolitical situation, um, the way in which the supply operates is considered to be low risk, we typically would do what is called a paper exercise, nothing more than tracing it through um, records and uh, policies and procedures. Uh, secondly, we have an elevated form of risk. Um, if we have an elevated form of risk, we would require a scenario uh, simulation. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, as I progress through my presentation today, I'll call this a role play event. It's, it's a little bit more applicable to the way in which we expect scenarios to be simulated through this role playing of events without really um, moving any type of inventories across any uh, situations, whether it's internal within the country or across borders. Um, the last situation that we have in our risk assessment is is the highest risk product, where we'd re we would require to have uh, what we are terming a product shipment test for those uh, products. So these are the specific tests we expect to see at um, each of our global supply locations. And it really starts with the assessment of risk, um, then building or refreshing the written contingency plan. Uh, there's an expectation of confirming the readiness and demonstrating the completeness of the contingency plan. So really, depending on the type of risk that is identified, uh, we expect the plan to be executed by those three outputs that I just mentioned in the previous slide. So paper, uh, role play, or shipment. Um, so finally, we expect a, a final debrief of the learning uh, during this process. And this is really a feedback loop so that we can learn either from these type of events or we can share best practices of these learnings across the various food groups um, in the supplier base that we have. So if I move on to our distribution uh, system, uh, we, term, we, we have a DQMP or distribution quality management process that addresses the management processes within our distribution system. And again, in the next couple of slides, you will see this linkage to the GFSI schemes. Um, I've also highlighted in red the parts I will expand upon shortly, uh, specifically crisis management and uh, stock recovery and traceability on the slide. And here you will see contingency planning expectation that I will also be covering as part of the way in which we deal with recalls, withdrawals within our supply chain. So I want to pivot now to an exercise we require to, in addition to the mock recalls conducted during the food safety audits. McDonald's uses a third party vendor to manage what we call our unannounced external withdrawal exercises for suppliers. And these are suppliers that typically have an annual spend of greater than 500,000 US dollars. Uh, in essence, a mock, re uh, a mock critical non-conformance scenario is set up. Um, and our requirement is that the supplier location is able to show through the submission of evidence that they are capable of tracing one up and one down within three hours. So it does not stop here though, as we require further traceability to the ingredient origin and the individual restaurant within 24 hours. 
So the frequency of this uh, exercise is determined based on inherent product risk. And we have three product risk categories, as you can see from this table down below. Uh, category one, is high risk and includes, for example, chicken, ready to eat meats, etc. Uh, these suppliers are assessed every year. Category two, uh, we consider these medium risk suppliers and, or at least products, and we include, and, and these would include uh, products such as fries and pasteurized dairy products, for example. Uh, suppliers in this category would be assessed every two years. Um, category three are low risk foods and includes, for example, frying oils and pickles. Uh, these suppliers are, are assessed every three years. So I thought these top level processes that you see on the slide will give you a better picture of the procedure. Our third party vendor is responsible for determining blackout dates at the supplier location, and to then determine and exercise an initiation date. Uh, I want to stress that the exercise is completely unannounced and that the clock starts when the email is sent. Our expectation of the supplier location is that the incident is analyzed uh, to determine the significance as well as production scope based on things like batch numbers and volumes produced and shipped, uh, et cetera. Then based on the traceability records, a one step up and a one step down traceability must be established. This must be completed within the three hour period that I spoke about earlier uh, to meet our, our requirements. But however, furthermore, we expect our suppliers to determine the affected raw material or the ingredient that must be traced all the way back to the farm, as well as the restaurant within 24 hours. All this requires substantiation through documented evidence, such as records. Uh, we have internally to McDonald's a traceability form that we call a G1 traceability form, uh, which is used to help to standardize this process. Uh, this form is submitted when the exercise is completed. Um, I'll point out that we do require the supplier location also to conduct a SWOT analysis to understand um, and apply the learnings that came out of the exercise. But finally, what you'll see also in the, on, on these chevrons is uh, that the third party vendor that we use on a quarterly basis uh, submits to us an analysis of um, exercise performance. So let me show you what this would look like. This is an example of an email that starts the process. It gives a description of the scenario itself. The items that were impacted, including the RIN, for those of you who don't know, RIN stands for Worldwide Raw Item Number and identifies the particular food in our system. Here's an actual example but this time it's in a summary format uh, at the end. As you can see, we also expect photos um, for the final report. So this section shows information about the performance for this event. The supply location did well on their one forward and one back part, but was over the 24 hour um, requirement that we have to trace back to the farm. So I thought I'd share with you just a, a snapshot of what we look at overall. The information here is from the European Union. Uh, the top left graph shows a breakdown of exercises conducted in 2022 by risk category. You can clearly see that it's heavily weighted towards our higher risk foods. The graph on the bottom right further expands this information by food, and you can kind of see the, the type of foods that we spend a lot of time ensuring that we have really good traceability for. So things like produce, um, beef, eggs, uh, dairy products, as well as bakery items tend to be uh, top of our list. And finally, this is uh, where we landed. 
Uh, for both the three hour and the 24 hour trace exercise, we summarize the average times as well as the time range taken per uh, food group. And you can kind of see, you know, it's uh, some of the food categories do better than others. Um, and those are the categories that we typically spend a lot more time uh, working with those individual uh, supply locations uh, from a McDonald's perspective. So I'll leave you with these four key takeaways. In fact, I will premise this by saying that investing in preventive strategies far outweighs everything that I just spoke about. Uh, but it is indeed better to be prepared for potential recalls or withdrawals. I think we can all agree that it um, that irrespective of these exercises, an actual recall will be messy and, and costly. Um, many of you may know that according to the there's a 2011 uh, GMA, the Grocery Manufacturers Association study, that the average cost of a recall is more than 10 million uh, US dollars. In addition, if you look at the impact on stock prices, uh, it has a large effect on market capitalization. So for example, a recall anywhere um, in the QSR, uh, quick service restaurant category, impacts our stock as well. Uh, so you can see why it's important that food safety is never a competitive advantage for anyone of us within uh, the food industry. Secondly, the second takeaway item um, I'd like to highlight here is that while the pandemic really taught us about the significance of uh, supply chain contingency planning, it simultaneously put the spotlight on how important it is to be prepared for recalls and withdrawals. Uh, thirdly, it's easy to think about uh, responsibility is one up and one down. Uh, but if we say that we manage food safety from farm to fork, uh, we need to develop complete capabilities uh, along this entire continuum. And then lastly, uh, I'll, you know, the last point for me is, is often forgotten. Uh, but if we think about what I would consider this, the, a key component of the exercise, it is really about um, making sure that we learn from the exercises that occur, as well as uh, make the appropriate changes based on these learnings to both the processes as well as the behaviors that are necessary to affect uh, a more efficient and uh, effective recall or withdrawal process. So with that, I will, um, I will end off today. I want to thank you for listening to our approach to uh, recalls. Um, I will end by my part by also thanking our suppliers. They are really the ones that have a skin in the game, uh, make all of what I just said happen every day to keep uh, the public safe. And I look forward to having further discussion on this topic. Uh, with that, I will hand it back to you, Jonathan. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have come in for you. Uh, first of all, uh, what type of training is provided to suppliers regarding the withdrawal recall expectations? Yeah, good point. Um, so the various uh, forums that we use to provide training for, for recalls. Uh, the one um, is we have various sessions that highlight and, and go through in, in a lot more detail than I did today. Uh, components of, for example, our contingency plan, uh, the way in which recalls are supposed to be conducted uh, versus uh, that EWE process or the external withdrawal process that I spoke about. Uh, these are webinars, for example, that are very similar to what we're doing today, that we open up to um, all of our markets around the world, or countries around the world. But those are typically uh, forwarded to suppliers as well as some of the audit or certification bodies uh, also around the world. And those are, those are the typical training sessions uh, that we use to um, you know, further create detail and content around, uh, around these processes. Um, I would also add that um, McDonald's has, and we continue to develop, to develop um, e-learning models um, that goes into all aspects of our SQMS or Supplier Quality and Food Safety Management System. Uh, but every now and again, what we do is we will have a very specific e-module that we will also post um, that specifically addresses things like supplier recall procedures. Uh, I'll end off 
this question by saying that uh, we are constantly scanning our supplier base for best practices. And where we see those best practices, we use these best practices to show and tell, um, either through webinar sessions or through uh, what we call supplier connect meetings, where we invite most of our major suppliers around the world, and we'll have that particular supply location or organization um, you know, go through their methodology, um, perhaps starting with a problem that they had, but then ending off with uh, you know, the results of, of any changes that they made to their procedures. Excellent. Uh, one more question that came in. Uh, when produce is purchased by a distributor and a recall is required, is it the distributor's responsibility to contact the end user or the manufacturer? Yeah, that's a, an interesting question because it depends on how you define distributor. Um, you know, for us, if we have it within our distribution system, it is our responsibility. So, you know, when we have, uh, I mentioned uh, Harvey and Martin Brower, those are the two organizations that we typically use. We are then responsible for making sure that we align the entire supply chain. Uh, well, this our supply chain and then also going back to the supply itself. If it is a, a distributor that is managed by the supplier, then our expectation would be that the supplier itself manages the uh, materials that are either recalled or, um, or destroyed within the process. Okay, uh, one more question. Any guidance on how to get the buy-in from your suppliers for such a robust program when you may be a lower volume customer for them? Yeah, it's not an easy, um, it's not an easy sell. <laughs> However, having said that, I think there, there, there are two things I can share. Number one, uh, we are consistent in our approach to the external withdrawal program, the way in which we apply uh, food safety audits, including section four uh, of our crisis management um, protocols and procedures across the board. So consistency is key. Um, I think that the other uh, thing that we we do is that, um, you know, even with smaller suppliers, we have successes and we highlight those um, successes through various recognition programs that we have. Uh, so we, we do that. Um, and then of course, you know, it's. We, I think it's all about uh, making sure that we leverage what we would term our three-legged stool. We consider all of our suppliers to be part of McDonald's in terms of um, components of what what is called this three-legged stool: McDonald's, the corporation, McDonald's, the franchisee, and the supplier base. Um, once there's this recognition, recognition, you know, it's a lot easier for the supplier, even in the smaller volume suppliers. Um, to understand their role that they play, um, not just in, in the success of McDonald's, but also in the managing of brand risk associated with McDonald's. So we, we grow together. Um, and if we, we come to that realization, then it's a little bit of an easier sell, even for smaller suppliers. Excellent. Uh, looks like last question. How are the recall and contingency expectations standards verified? Yeah, um, I think I went through most of that. The, the verification process is done as part of the, uh, the audit, the food safety audit process. So every single supplier, food supplier to McDonald's is expected by our um, agreement to have a food safety audit. Um, the section that I addressed in the first few slides uh, dealt deals with or dealt with uh, crisis management, but we do have very specific policies around that contingency plan. All of that is verified through the um, either the GFSI plus addendum audit or a full SQMS audit. That information, by the way, goes into a repository. Um, that we have access to. Um, so we do have the ability to then run reports to deter to figure out and determine which suppliers are doing well within crisis management, which includes recall or withdrawal procedures, or which ones need a little bit of help. 
uh, where a little bit of help is needed, uh, we will then schedule one-on-one -on -one either training sessions or one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions uh, within that market or country uh, to, you know, to work one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with that supplier. So visibility is key. Um, so we do have the ability to track data and to really analyze and understand which suppliers need to have a little bit of coaching around um, about around recalls and withdrawals. Excellent. Thank you so very, very much. Greatly appreciate your participation today. You know, and I, and I just wanted to comment as I reflect at the sheer number of McDonald's retail stores, the sheer number of meals served per day. It is impressive that, you know, the, the food safety controls and the, the consistency that McDonald's continuously puts out onto the market for its consumers. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Jonathan.